recently put out a video about Moana 2 smashing, absolutely destroying the box office record for first weekend opening numbers over Thanksgiving for an animated film. That was a mouthful. And now I want to go into a little deeper dive about Disney in general, if they got that spice back, if they found that magical recipe they once had, or if the future is looking bleak. In my opinion, it's a little bit of both. Let's talk about it. You know, there's a lot of channels out there that are dedicated to pretty much shitting on Disney 24-7. <clears throat> I'm not one of them. Uh, I actually like the company overall. I think that they have set a lot of kind of bad standards for other companies, other studios to follow. But overall, I've always had just, you know, a lot of nostalgic admiration for the talent that's worked there over the years. It's Disney's given us some of the most amazing, you know, overused magical experiences ever from their their classic films like uh, Lion King. I and mean, it's, it's sad to say they're classic now. <laughs> but they are. You know, at one point I saw the Lion King in theaters. That's it's kind of sad to say out loud, but it's a re- it's a reality. We all have to live with it. I think a good amount of my audience is right there with me. But I remember seeing the Lion King in theaters and bawling my eyes out when when Mufasa stupidly jumped down there into that gorge and got completely bodied. What was he thinking? Simba's not worth that. Simba's a cocky little ass. He's a Nepo king. And then there's Fantasia, Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast. The list goes on and on. And they continued to innovate and bring new things to the table, acquiring Pixar. You have Toy Story. You have Big Hero 6, Wreck-It Ralph, modern princess movies like Frozen, Tangled, Moana. So, yeah, they, they've been constantly making content for all ages to appreciate and to grow up with. And yes, there's been missteps, and I think a lot of them happened last year, and I think they've gone back to the drawing board and sadly maybe took the wrong ideas from those failures about what to do moving forward. And that's where I want to start. So in 2023, we're post-pandemic, but we're clearly seeing the fallout of that, where there's been a lot of shakeups internally with these studios, what they should release, how they get them filmed and out the door. And for Disney, they had four pretty big bombs in 2023. And so, yes, you had all these YouTube channels fired up. They're like, Disney's gone. They're too woke. They don't have an audience anymore. They are hemorrhaging money. When in fact, every year, the studio makes, the company makes billions of dollars. Even with their parks this year, I looked back, I checked the, I checked the receipts They were down year over year, but they still made like 1.6 billion in in, in revenue. Like they're not losing money. They're just not making as much money as they were before. And we're talking a three, 4% difference year over, but they were also kind of in line with what Universal Studios was putting out as far as their attendance numbers. So it was down across the board not just one or the other sort of a situation. That doesn't mean I agree with what they're doing with the parks and the price hikes and not extending that land that they have available. They have hundreds of acres available to build on and they just refuse to do anything with it. That's another conversation that I'm not equipped to talk about. But I do want to say, as far as the movies go, you have all these channels that say they suck, you know, they're, they're, they're doing these dumb things and then they'll just beat it in the ground. And while there's always points to be made, which I've made as well, some of the stunt casting, the live action stuff is garbage for the most part. They're still making smart plays for themselves. They're reading the tea leaves. They're seeing what audiences are into and they're knocking it out of the park. But 2023 was a different story. I have a list of four movies that were financial failures. Wish, their big princess movie for the year, bombs at the box office. It didn't look very good. It had this ugly cell shaded kind of have your cake and eat it too 2D, 3D mix hybrid. It's like, I think if they would have gone in and made this a beautiful 2D animated flick, they would have seen a pretty big return on investment, but they didn't. They did this ugly amalgamation and it just wasn't an interesting story. And I'm pretty sure it went through several rewrites. I think it was also repurposed at one point from a Disney Plus movie, kind of like Moana 2 was. Then there's Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. 
They have three non-animated films that completely tanked. Indiana Jones is one of them. Now, Indiana Jones, Dial of Destiny actually made a good chunk of money, but it cost a stupid amount to make, a ridiculous amount to make. And so it didn't see the return on investment. Then there's The Haunted Mansion, not to be confused with The Haunted Mansion with Eddie Murphy. This is a remake. This is a new version. Came and went like a wet fart. Nobody thinks about that film. Nobody probably remembers that movie even exists, but it did. And lastly, there's the Marvels. This is probably the biggest failure of all of them because you are talking about a sequel set in the MCU following one of the highest grossing MCU films of all time. It's in the top three or four, I believe and that's Captain Marvel. A lot of people will argue the only reason Captain Marvel made what it did was because they wedged it between two of the biggest Avengers movies ever, Infinity War and Endgame. I'd be one of those people to make that argument, but I think it was more than that. This was the first big female superhero for Marvel to get its to get her own movie, and, and we saw the success that Wonder Woman had. Brie Larson was, at the time, very likable, and so, yeah, I think people went out in droves to see this for several different reasons. And it was not a great movie. I don't think it was terrible. I just think it was kind of mediocre. It did follow that similar playbook that these Marvel movies do where they build up an origin story. And it's just not interesting anymore. Unless you have a cool twist on it or you have some amazing action set pieces or a character that just has some energy to them pun intended, because she is like an energy character, but not full of any of it. And so it was not a good year for Disney at all. And people said, have they lost it? Is it? Are they done? Are they going down roads that don't have audiences anymore? Well, let's take a look back at 2024 and we're going to find out that's not the case at all. Because Inside Out 2 made well over a billion dollars. It's one of the highest grossing movies of all time. You have Moana 2, which is probably going to make over a billion dollars. It already had the biggest opening Thanksgiving weekend. It's at almost 400 million in just five days. And then there's Deadpool and Wolverine. That one made a little bit of money, if I recall. People seem to like that one quite a bit. And speaking of Marvel, last year it wasn't all doom and gloom. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 did put up really good numbers. Made 800 and I don't, I don't know, almost $890 million. So it did very well for the studio, but overall, not a great year. But as we see, Disney has slowed down. Bob Iger is back in charge for better or worse, depending on what side you fall out with him. And he has decided that, yeah, we're not going to do anything pretty much except for sequels. And on the rare occasion, we'll make something new and different. We have one more movie for the rest of the year, and that's the stupid Mufasa prequel. I say stupid because I hated that live action abomination that was Lion King a couple years back. And that movie did stupidly well. Over a billion dollars again. Climbed way up there. It's in the top 10, I think. Highest grossing movies of all time. And so, yeah, Disney knows how to make money. And they continuously do it time and time again. And so here we are with another stupid movie in the Lion King franchise, Mufasa. It's a prequel. Honestly surprised I haven't heard anything else about the live action Beauty and the Beast prequel that we were supposed to get. Or maybe it's a sequel. I'm not sure. I can't keep track of it. But that one was also supposed to get a spinoff or something because it did very well too. And that's not all. The first Omen, believe it or not, owned by Disney did well. Horror movies typically do pretty well at the box office. They have low budgets and good turnouts. Alien Romulus already have a greenlit sequel because it did so well. And Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, they'll never end with these. People love apes on horseback with guns. Just keep churning out those apes movies every so often. And sadly, I shouldn't say sadly, it just amazes me that they continue to be pretty damn good. Like, how many stories can you tell in this universe? Apparently unlimited. And I guess they'll just keep telling them until, until the monkeys come home. That brings us to the future. What does 2025 have in store? Well, the MCU is back for starters. It's been a while, old friend. What do you have to offer? Well, we have a new Captain America movie, Brave New World. Anthony Mackie is now Captain America. He's got the shield. He's got the wings. I don't know if he has the super serum. Not really sure how he's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Red Hulk in this as a regular dude. The Disney Plus TV series was mid, started out promising, got worse as it went on. And his whole character arc was that he wasn't going to take the serum. 
That was his thing. So it would be odd if suddenly he takes it in the film, but it would also be puzzling if he didn't because, you know, how would he fight any of the people and do any of the things he does in this trailer? Which looks okay. I think the trailer looks fine. Apparently it had a ton of reshoots. It's costing a stupid amount of money. So this might be an example of Disney starting out on a really bad foot. But I also think this movie was pretty far along in production before Iger could come in and start chopping heads, putting this thing on the cutting room floor. The other one that's gonna be a little bit of a puzzler is Snow White, the celebrated film that isn't out yet with that girl that everyone loves online. Th this movie looks terrible, in my opinion. I'm not a huge Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs fan though, so I, I, I also don't care at all about this movie. It just looks pretty bad. You have CG dwarves because Peter Dinklage fucked over his entire crew and said, yeah, we don't want to be treated like supernatural creatures in movies. We don't want to play characters, I guess. That's like a tall dude saying, I don't want to be a giant in a movie. Like, I thought you were acting. I thought that was the whole point. Anyway, uh, yeah, now they're CG and they look terrible. The movie looks bad, but... These live action movies do really well for Disney. Even The Little Mermaid started out tough, didn't have that China market, but it managed to still make a profit at the end of the day. And I'm not so sure. I, I think Snow White's going to do fine. Let's put it that way. I think it's going to make a good amount of money. Uh, so, you know, so far, maybe we have a miss with the MCU stuff, but then we're back again with Snow White. And from there, it's I think it's going to be pretty clear sailing for Disney and it's going to see a lot of profit. Thunderbolts is next up. You got a bunch of the B-list crew from the other Avengers movies and other rando things coming together. Looks like a Guardians of the Galaxy again, but I'm into it. I think it looks more the Suicide Squad style of James Gunn than the Marvel side. Lilo and Stitch live action kills me to say that out loud. It's going to do huge numbers. I just know it is. There's no, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Now the interesting one. Elio. This is a Pixar film. It's a wholly unique movie. Not a sequel, not a prequel, not a sidequel, not a fuckquel, not a live action remakel. It's its own thingle. And uh, I haven't seen much on it. I feel like it was shelved for a long time. I, I, I just don't know what this movie is or where it's been, but I swear I saw a trailer for it like two years ago. Might have been hit by the COVID bug. And so they reworked it over time. Hard to know, but this is going to be an interesting one. See if... Um, See if Pixar still has that magic that seems to have gone to the sequel industry now. The Fantastic Four, First Steps, gonna make a bunch of money. It, it just is, regardless of if it's good or not. People love Fantastic Four. It's not fant Four stick so I think this one's a safe bet. Freakier Friday, that, that's certainly a movie someone, I guess, somewhere was wanting. Lindsay Lohan's back. Can't, she can't act. Can we say this now? Is it okay to say that Lindsay Lohan can't act? I know she was like Hollywood darling, Hollywood Hollywood royalty from Parent Trap. And then she kind of climbed up through a bunch of movies, did Mean Girls, but then got a bunch of face work done and stuff and fell off the face of the earth for like 20 years. And now she's back shitting out Netflix versions of Hallmark movies. She's not good. At one point, maybe, but no, I'm sorry. I, I don't I don't have any interest in her or Freakier Friday. But maybe, it, it, this seems like a movie that should go to Disney Plus, just based on the concept, because we saw that with Disenchanted, Hocus Pocus 2, Home Alone 18, or whatever that one was. This feels like Disney Plus, but I think it's going to theaters. And it'll probably make money. I'm guessing the budget for this will be pretty small. And there is nostalgia baked in. Parents will take their kids, relive their glory days, yada, yada, yada. This next one on my list, I'm honestly just scratching my head at. Tron Ares. <laughs> I'm not like into Tron, so I can only speak for myself, but Disney keeps making Tron a thing. They had that huge ride they opened a couple years back, which I went on, which was awesome for the 15 seconds it lasts for. But is there a huge market for Tron? This is where I'm completely naive, and I, I guess I should look up the box office rev revenue for the last Tron movie to, to be like, oh, that makes sense. I just didn't think it did very well, but maybe it did, and Tron Ares is going to be well-loved and well-received. This is another mystery pick for me, though. Now's where we get to the real money makers. We got a Predator sequel, Predator Badlands, coming out. These movies always do well. We have Avatar 3. 
I stupidly thought, and this was another COVID situation, that Avatar 2 wasn't going to do well. I have to hang my sad hat on that prediction. I went against James Cameron, the God King himself, who has never missed in Cameron We Trust. I slipped because it's been so long between Avatar movies. I completely forgot that audiences don't give a shit about Avatar. They just want the mine ride. They just want the roller coaster 3D experience. That's what Avatar is. They are rides you go on. They're not movies, really. They're not like well, they're, they're well made, but the scripts are so stupid. I just can't believe any, and you, that's why you never hear anyone talk about them after they hit the theaters and leave. They're just never mentioned again. And people will argue, like, yes, they are. Yeah, bullshit. I don't ever see a person walking around with an Avatar t-shirt on or quoting Avatar. I can barely tell you the names of the characters. There's Jake. I don't know who else there is. N Natiri or something. Who cares? These movies aren't very good. They're just big budget things to get people to go out and watch. And so, yeah, I was stupid to go against that thought that it would bomb. It made a fuck ton of money. And it's, it's the number one grossing movie of all time, as a matter of fact, the second one. And here we are again with the third on the way. Avatar Fire and Ass. I'm sorry, Fire, fire and Ash. It's probably right the first time, but uh, you know, we'll see. Maybe this one will win me over again. It'll make a dumb amount of money in either case. Speaking of which, Zootopia 2. We're just sequeling the shit out of everything. Zootopia 2 gonna make a ton of money. Easy money. Why? Has Disney not greenlit Big Hero 6 too? I will never understand, but whatever, we'll press on. Few more movies coming out in 2026. This is gonna be an insane year for Disney box office. Avengers Doomsday. I don't care about Avengers Doomsday, but maybe a trailer will win me over. We have, for some inexplicable reason, Robert Downey Jr. playing Doctor Doom, not a variant of Iron Man, I, I, I really don't understand the logic here. I guess they're looking at Downey as James Cameron for director. They're like, Downey is the, the acting version of James Cameron director. We put him in the movie. It's going to be gold. Let's just cast him as someone else. I think regardless, it's going to do really well. It is an Avengers movie. And that's all you need. Mandalorian and Grogu. Yeah, it'll make a bunch of money. It's got the cute merchandise toy, Mandalorian. The first two seasons were awesome. It's it's trash after that, but I'll give the movie a shot and I think it'll do very well. And we're gonna end this explosive next couple years with Toy Story 5. You got a friend in me. You got money in Disney's pocket. And there you go. There are more announcements that they have. I, I'm sure Frozen 3 will be somewhere around here, somewhere in the ether, but for now, th that's a huge lineup of movies and they seem like they're almost all pretty much guaranteed hits. You know, there's only like two or three that I listed that are not sequels. Almost everything on here is a sequel, except for that Pixar thing and maybe one or two others. The only ones I'm kind of questioning are Tron and that beginning of the year with Captain America, but it's mostly because of the bloated budget, the constant reshoots, and just the fact that you know, audiences might be confused as to why we have a new Captain America, what's going on in the story, because the last time they saw this character was probably an Endgame, and they forgot that he was given the shield, or they just don't really know the events of the TV series. Regardless, a couple of misfires, yeah, Disney's Disney's back. They're, they're going to be making a lot of money. All right, I want to hear from you. Are you excited about any of this? Uh, or are you just kind of sad? Like, uh, yeah, okay, well... Once upon a time, we had innovation, we had some exciting new stories, and now we're in this Moana 2 world where everything is just going to coast by on name recognition, colorful graphics, and that's good enough for most audiences. That's a sad place for me, but uh, yeah, it's, it's what we have. Let me know, please comment, like the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and lastly, if you would, become a patron at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies, tis the season and I'm a one-man band over here, there are different tier levels that give you different access to things, but even at $1 a month, you get 300 exclusive videos. They're just waiting for you. They're just sitting there, percolating, waiting to be watched. And I would appreciate it. All right, hopefully I see you next time.